Welcome back to the Cooner Report, Hour 3. Jeff Cooner, Boston's Bulldozer, 806 here on the great WRKO, AM 680. 617-266-6868 is the number. We're now joined by Dylan De Silva, who at a very young age, to the credit of this incredible man, uh, started Cape Cod Cares for the Troops. And as you know, we're going to be holding an event this Sunday, Memorial Day weekend to honor our troops, whereby we have raised money. Bill Kelly apparently gave us a nice check. In fact, not apparently, he did. He gave us a $2,000 check. Uh, we bought a lot of supplies with that yesterday. Thanks to the generosity of you in the audience, more money's been coming in. We are going to be sending socks, toothpaste, toothbrushes, snacks, DVDs, you name it, to our troops in Afghanistan, toiletries, basic necessities to our boys who are literally fighting the Taliban and Al-Qaeda day after day. They are risking their lives in a war. And so to honor them, we want to send them what it, do whatever we can to help them. So we are going to be sending off supplies. This Sunday, the event starts at 1130. I will be there at 11 o'clock. It's in Hyannis just opposite of Cape Cod Mall at the Kmart parking lot. Uh, we will be there. Uh, other people will be there. Uh, we're going to be raising money and sending off supplies to the troops. It'd be wonderful if you can show up. And joining us now, Dylan De Silva. Dylan, thank you so much for coming on the Kuna Report. Not a problem. Thanks for having me. So is it true that as a young, as a boy, is it true you started this as a boy at eight years of age? Uh, I started at 12 years of at age. At 12 years of age, uh, wow. Yeah. We did it, uh, it was originally a Christmas project, and then it ended up just blossoming into a whole uh, non-profit organization. And I spoke to Michelle, and so basically the goal is to send supplies to our troops serving overseas, in particular those that served in Iraq, although that war is now done, but mm -hmm. still with our troops in Afghanistan, correct? Yes, we send care packages uh all over the world so there's some guys that are stationed uh in supporting uh camps and we send them we sent a bunch of care packages to Djibouti, Africa and we also try and help a lot with uh the wounded warriors when they come back uh, and help them with whatever needs that they have and also the gold star families. Now, Dylan, I'm just curious, before we get into the actual numbers of how much money we've raised uh, and the event on Sunday, the specifics. Mm -hmm. What? How old? I mean, you were 12 years old, but when was this? Was this after 9/11? Uh, yes, this would be. It started 2004. What motivated you to do this? Was it because of what you saw happening after the 9/11 terrorist attacks and the wars you were involved in Afghanistan and Iraq, and you want to basically participate in your own way? Um, it had a little bit to do with 9-11, but I think it was mostly to help support the troops while they were away from their families for, at that time, it was an extended amount of times of 12, month, 12 to 18 months. So we just wanted to make sure that they knew that we were thinking of them and remembered them and supported them. Um, Dylan, so the event on Sunday, how much money have we raised so far? Did we hit? Because Bill Kelly said that he would match another two thousand. He would throw in another two thousand dollars if we could raise two thousand dollars. Have we hit the two thousand dollar mark? Um, last I heard, it was we were at eighteen hundred and ninety. So we're close, but we're not there yet. So we're basically a hundred and ten dollars short. Yes. So if somebody cuts a check for a hundred and ten dollars. Will be at two thousand, which will then force Bill Kelly to match that with another two thousand. He's already given two thousand. Yes, and uh, I just want to—I would like to thank him personally for his donation. That's a lot of money to just donate, and we'd like to thank him for that. And also raising the eighteen hundred and ninety dollars uh, great accomplishment in one day. Well, so basically, that would be a total of if if somebody would cut that check for one hundred and ten dollars. It would be a total of $6,000, correct, Dylan? Yes. Dylan, I'll tell you what I'm going to do, my friend. The Cooner man, Jeff Cooner, is going to cut a check right after the show, $110 on the nose. We're going to make it $2,000 even, and then I'm going to give Bill Kelly a call. I'm going to say, Bill, 
cough up another two grand. <laughs> awesome. Thank it's, you very much. It's time to go shopping again for the troops. I'll tell Brittany and I we're gonna we're gonna hit the dollar store again and just <laughs> load up on supplies. It's fun going out and buying all the supplies. Well, hold on now, Dylan. Well, hold, Dylan, hold on now. Hold on. Apparently, I got people on the line. Do they want to cut the hundred and ten dollar check, Brittany? Hopefully, that'd be great. All right, hold. Okay, Joe, you're up first. Do you want to? How, how much do you want to give, Joe? Jeff, I'll give you two hundred. Are you serious? Absolutely. My wife Debbie and I were uh, we're listeners, long time listeners, and it'd be my, our pleasure. Just let me know how to get it to you. I'll give you a check by phone or, or whatever. Uh, J Joe, hang on. Please don't hang up. We're going to get your personal information. Thank you very much, Joe. Gary, you're up next. Do you want to cut the... Gary, do you want to be the guy that signs the $110 check that makes it to 2000 And I can call yeah. up Bill Kelly? Jeff, I keep telling you, I, I, money's worthless today the way they're printed. I'll give you 250 Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> My minimum donation, everything is 250 Jeff. It's worthless money today. I'll tell Bill <laughs> Kelly. He knows that. That's why he's giving it away as a donation, because we need the tax write-off. It's worthless. <laughs> Gary, please stay on hold. We'll get your information. I swear I love you guys. All the audience, I just... The phone lines are like blazing. We've been raising money over the last couple days for the troops. It's just phenomenal. I swear, this audience is incredible. Bill, you're up uh, next. Oh, sorry. Who, who, who do I have up next? I don't. The, okay, the, the phone lines. Are, <laughs> the phone lines are jammed with people that want to give extra money. I love you to all of you. I'm still giving the hundred and ten dollars. So, Dylan, I'm, awesome. look, listen, Dylan. I'm cutting a check. Jeff Corner is going to cut the check. Trust me on this. Do you guys prefer cash? You want cash? Either way, it works. It's no, you tell me what works better. Dil what works better for you, Dylan? You want a hundred? What do you want? It then an envelope, a cash? You want a check? You want a money order? Help me, help you. A wire transfer? What do you want, Dylan? Uh, checks we can do because uh, we can give you guys a receipt and give you guys a thank you letter for uh, donating the money. Hundred and ten bucks is coming, my friend. Okay, consider thank you it very done. Much. Awesome. And I'm going to give Bill Kelly a personal call right after this show and say, <laughs> Bill. I have to call you out now. You gave two thousand, and you said if we raised two thousand, you'd match that with another two thousand. So, That's and with awesome. the with the pledges that we're getting now, Dylan, I honestly think we can get up to seven thousand dollars. That'd be great. You see, Dylan. More, I, Dylan, you have to understand something. All right, I, I don't want to get political with you. I know you're a nonprofit, and you don't want to get yourself mm -hmm. in trouble. So, this is my mm -hmm. comment, not yours. Okay, I just want you to listen to this. Okay. While this gangster regime in Washington led by that con man, the dear leader, Obama, as he's cutting benefits for veterans. While veterans are dying in VA hospitals, we, the American people, are sending supplies. You see, they're cutting benefits, we're sending supplies. You know what's going to be next, Dylan? You really want a great nonprofit? Start a nonprofit, medications and drugs for the troops. Because they're not getting it from the VA, Dylan. So yeah. we're gonna, so we're gonna have to you know we're gonna have to basically feed them. Now we're gonna be clothing them, giving them toiletries. What the hell, Dylan? Why don't we just give them the medication and drugs and the health care they need? We'll take care of them completely. I'm just thinking out loud here, Dylan. <laughs> Dylan, he doesn't, he doesn't know this poor guy's running a nonprofit. He doesn't want to get political. Dylan, listen. <laughs> thank you so much for your honestly, your compassion, your charity. Your sacrifice, your time, your effort, your patriotism. I know the troops really appreciate it. And I got to tell you, when I talk to a young man like you, full of altruism, full of patriotism, full of courage, full of optimism, it gives me hope. Are you going to be there on Sunday? Am I going to meet you personally? Yes, I'm flying in Friday. I'll be up in the parking lot, help setting it whoa, up whoa, whoa, as you, soon as I fly in. And whoa, then, Dylan, where are you flying in from? Um, I live in Ohio right now. I, you live in, I Ohio? live in Ohio? Yes. Dylan, sorry, listen, I don't want to get too personal here, Dylan, but I thought you were from Cape Cod. So what happened? You lived in Cape Cod and then you moved to Ohio? Um, I'm from Cape Cod. I moved out to Ohio for college uh, three years ago. Really? And I just graduated and uh, I'm working out here right now. So you got it. You grad. You went to. What's if you don't mind me asking? What university did you go to? Uh, I went to Ohio Technical College for uh, power oh. generation. Ohio, where where is Ohio Technical College? It's right in it's inside Cleveland. 
Oh, it's inside Cleveland. My sister just moved there about maybe ooh, six, eight months ago. Yeah, it's. Um, she moved to Cleveland. She moved to a uh, suburb of Cleveland with her husband, who they keep reminding me over and over again is a doctor. But let that go, Dylan. <laughs> so the do my brother-in-law, the doctor, uh, moved out to Cleveland. They love Cleveland. The boys love. She got two. I got two nephews. She got two boys. They love Cleveland. My sister Jen. Do you know her by any chance, Jennifer Cooner? Does that name ring a bell? Um, I do not. Is she work are they working at uh the Cleveland Clinic? That's the big one out there. Nah, he's not working at the Cleveland uh, Clinic. Okay. But don't worry, I'm still I'm still a Boston sports fan though. So you're still okay, so you haven't forgotten your roots or anything, Dylan? No, I have not. <laughs> Were you depressed with the Bruins? I was very depressed. Yeah, I watched they, every game. They gave it away. So they gave it yeah. away. The seventh game, they just they just gave it to him. Yeah, I was I was pretty depressed to be honest. <laughs> Well, Dylan, listen, so you're going to fly down from Cleveland for the event on Sunday? Yes. Dylan, I can't wait to meet you. I love in a non-homosexual way. I love <laughs> you, Dylan. So I can't wait to meet you on Sunday. Dylan, thank you so much for your time, your volunteering effort, everything that you do. We appreciate it. The troops appreciate it. And I can't wait to see you. It's Sunday, my friends, 11 o'clock uh, in Hyannis, opposite of Cape Cod Mall in the Kmart parking lot. Uh, they're going to have a nice, I mean, there's going to be a salute to the veterans. We're going to be pledging allegiance to the flag. We're going to have troops coming and going. Uh, we'll be there for at least three to four hours. You can also bring your kids and family members. It's going to be very kid-friendly, a lot of activities. Grace is coming. Ashton's coming. Ava's coming. We're, uh, Brittany's going to be there. We're all going to be there. If you can show up, that would be tremendous. Dylan, keep up the great work. That check is coming right after the show. Okay, thanks a lot, and I look forward to seeing you on Sunday. God bless you, Dylan. Okay, thank you. Take care. We're talking, we've been talking to Dylan De Silva at 12 years of age, founded Cape Cod Cares for the Troops. You ask me why I still have hope for the future, my friends. This is the reason why. Please, to all of you, keep the money coming. We're going to hit 6000 guaranteed now with some more donations. Gary, $250. Joe, $200. we are already at 6450 We can hit $7,000. I, I mean, let's not, Brittany's saying let's hit 10000 Brittany, let's not get excited here. Let's not, you know, let's not set the bar too high. 7000 is phenomenal. You see, they're cutting benefits. Obama's cutting benefits. VAs are dying, but that's okay, because we're going to be sending supplies. That's what we do. And no hashtags, by the way. We're just sending out the supplies. Pretty soon, the next nonprofit, it's going to be beds and drugs and medication for the troops. Clinics for the troops. Donna, you're up next. Thanks for holding, and welcome. Oh, Jeff, I'm so excited. I get to meet you and Brittany and your family. I'm going to be coming to it. Oh, great. I can't wait to meet you finally in the flesh, Donna. I know, I know, face to face. So, um, listen, now, you're going to be there from 11. You're going to be there till about 3-ish, do you think? Uh, I'll definitely be there at least until 3, more likely probably till 4 or 4.30. Okay, we'll try to come earlier because I like to do the Pledge of Allegiance and the whole opening ceremonies. Now, I went to the website, and I didn't realize you were doing uh, raising money. Uh, is it exclusively? I've already got a box on my kitchen floor, That's and good. I'm starting That's to good. sell stuff. Is that good? Donna, a box is phenomenal. Okay. A box is, we're just, because I called up Bill, let's tell you what happened. We wanted to, I was going to put $500 in the pot mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. say, Cooksey, because, you know, Cooksey, we call him Cheapski here. <laughs> That's his nickname. So basically, I go, look, Cooks, you and I will say it's from us, but it's really from me. So I was going to put $500, do some shopping at the dollar store, you know, but right. toothpaste, toothbrushes, toiletries, you know, yada, yada, yada. And then Cooksey says, hey, Jeff, let's give Bill Kelly a call. And so I called him up. And I said, hey, Bill, you think you're willing to put you know, another $500 on the table? That'd be $1,000. Kelly said, I'll tell you what, I'll make it $2,000. Mm -hmm. I go, wow, Bill. <laughs> and then he said, but if, if your audience will match the $2,000, I'm going to put in another $2,000. So I honestly thought, wow, I was just happy with the $2,000, Donna. Yeah. Earl came along. Earl gave $1,000. <laughs> People... Yeah, mass tile company. People just out of the woodwork. They gave five hundred. People said twenty five, ten, twenty, fifty. We're at two thousand. Awesome. So just single. I think we can hit seven thousand dollars. Oh, awesome. Well, listen, we'll put in some money when we get there too. But 
I mean, if people go to the Cape Cod number four, the troops dot com, there's a whole fabulous list of stuff. And so we're just trying to fill up a box full of all that stuff to help make their lives more comfortable. And I have to say, Jeff, I have been shocked. I thought the government supplied the most basic stuff like good Lord toiletries to, to brush your teeth and to wash yourself and to write on and, and equipment for them. I, I was blown away that, that they're not supplied with stuff like that. I know. I mean, Donna, the way our troops are treated... Oh, it's disgusting. It's disgusting. It really is. Hey, listen, I figure you take that oath to be loyal to the country, and you go over there and put your life on the line and your limbs today, the way it's going, and you don't get the care. You deserve every drop of care, whether it's physical or psychological or spiritual, whatever it is that you need when you come home. They damn well better give it to them. Well, and Donna, not only that, not only, you know, you, you don't get mouthwash, you don't get to brush your teeth, yeah. uh, a bar of soap, that's that's gold down there. I, but, I'm just blown away by that. But I, Donna, when yeah. they shoot, when the, when, the, when the terrorists, when the Taliban, when those animals shoot yeah. at you and they're hiding in a village, you can't shoot back. Because if you shoot back, you're going to be court-martialed. That's insane. It's called self-defense. And then when they come over here and get in our prisons... They give them special halal food. They give them the prayer rugs. They handle things with plastic gloves so that they don't touch the Korean. I'm just, I'm, I just, I don't know. We're in an Alice in Wonderland's upside down world. Donna, they're on the front page of Rolling Stone magazine. I know it's disgusting. Uh, yeah. Marjorie Akbar Egan will write a, a puff piece saying how you have doe eyes and sexy hair. Honest to God, I'm just. Uh, listen, I so look forward to meeting you and Brittany and your wonderful family. Um, I'm part Italian, so I think that's great that Grace is part Italian. Not to be, you know, rate, you know, now. Oh, sure, no, it's okay. No, I live, Donna. I live with that all the time. <laughs> That's funny. Honestly, I was doing an event for the troops on Monday. I met some great guys, and their 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 parents are from the old country, from Italy. And they go, Ah, Jeff, we won't hold it against you that yeah, you're not exactly, Italian. Yeah. I said, no, no, hey, I'm Italian by marriage. There you go. That qualifies for me, so <laughs> I'm just joking around. But listen, people, I can't encourage people enough. Go to that website, and there's a stack of stuff on there. Pack it full as you possibly can. Give money, whatever you can, because these guys are putting their lives on the line, and we are very grateful for that. So we'll look forward to seeing you guys. I can't wait. Thank you so much. I look forward to meeting you, Donna. You bet, honey. Bye-bye. Safe travels. Take care. Bye-bye. Cape Cod Cares. Cape Cod for the troops. Cape Cod, the number four, the troops.com. Whatever you can give. Bring a box, send a box, socks, toothpaste, toothbrushes, snacks, uh, I mean, crackers. You, you wouldn't, be, everything work. Everything, everything is helpful. Every little bit counts. Trust me, they appreciate it. Uh, Cooksey, Brittany, we all went shopping yesterday. And Cooksey, I gotta give him credit. I mean, he's not, you know, he's known as Cheapski, right? So, but, but when he's spending other people's money, he does it in his own local community. We wanted to go to the dollar store right down the street here in Brighton, you know, because it's easier, it's more convenient. No, no, he, I swear, Cooksey was adamant on this point. We have to give back to his community. So it was all the way out to Lynn, schlep out to Lynn, and then there's Cooksey at the Lynn dollar store. I mean, he had a blast. We had five carriages. Cooksey was like, he was like, uh, almost like in heaven. He was like in paradise. I got $2,000 to spend. Shaving cream, razors. He was just like, it, it, sorry, the, the shelf, shampoo, soap. And it was hilarious because he's on the shelf and he just like with his forearm just throws everything into the carriage. And the cashiers are looking like, are you people insane? Like, what are you people like? What are you guys from Guatemala? You've never seen shaving cream before? Like, hey, it's for the troops. 617-266-6868 is the number. We can continue talking about this, but I want to get also your reaction to Charlie Baker's interview. 617-266-6868. Were you impressed by Charlie? Did he give you a reason to vote for him or gave you a reason not to vote for him? I want to hear from you, Boston. 825 on RKO. Don't touch that dial. Welcome back to the Cooner Report, 829 on the Great WRKO. Paul, you're up next. Thanks for holding. Go. Jeff. Hey, Paul. When you had Cooksey up in Lynn, hopefully he didn't resort to those old uh, days of Lynn, you know, five-finger discount. You know, you start <laughs> flipping in the razors and the toothpaste in the pocket. I'm going uh, to give at least $100. 
And depending on how I continue to bet against the Dead Sox, also known as the Red Sox, I think they have the Jerry Remy curse. So if I have a good week, if the Red Sox continue to keep losing, then I may even be able to increase that $100 donation. Oh, thank I'm not you, Paul. a big shot, but I want to address Charlie Baker. Go ahead, shoot. I don't want to call him Charlie Faker, but unfortunately, the Republicans in Massachusetts, whether it's Mitt Romney, Paul Salucci, there's no fire in the belly, if you understand that expression. I will definitely vote for him, because if you put a gun to my head, I try to get the gun out of your head. I will not vote for a Democrat, because they are actually the enemy within this country. I live in Somerville. If you have an illegal immigrant here, whether they're from El Salvador, Brazil, whatever may be the case, yes, they may in fact may be working, but I want to know if they've committed any crimes. You know, whether it's of a violent nature, whether it's of a sexual nature, you mean to tell me you're not going to take their fingerprints and find out if they may have done something in Mexico, may have done something in Florida, whatever may be the case. It's pathetic that within our own country, or within our own state, we just had a guy from Ecuador with his child in the back seat while he was intoxicated run over an American. That poor mother of the American that was killed is saying to herself, Talk about adding insult to injury. We already have a bad enough problem with Americans acting irresponsible. Now you're having people who aren't even from this country come over here and just commit crimes that actually kill and rape people? Paul, on, you? Paul I'm going to be discussing what's going on in Somerville at the 9 o'clock hour. But let me just say this. That mayor should be impeached. What he is now doing to the people of Somerville, to you, to your family, to your neighbors, is to me criminal. He's basically now turning Somerville into a magnet for illegal immigrants and all kinds of criminals. And I'm, and I'm telling you, you're going to see more people like Matthew Denise getting run over. You're going to see more gangbangers infesting that area. You're going to see more murders, more rapes. It is absolutely insane what that man is doing. It is reckless to the highest degree. He's, now he wants to, he's going to sign an executive order turning Somerville this is, this is almost unprecedented, saying he does not want the cops in any way, shape, or form to now enforce our immigration laws within Somerville? Is this man insane? 617-266-6868 is the number. I got to go. Hard news break. What did you make of the Charlie Baker interview? Are you going to vote for Charlie, not vote for Charlie? I want to hear from you, Boston. 617-266-6868. Let's take it to Angela in the newsroom. Welcome back to the Corner Report. 838 here on the great WRKO. 617-266-6868 is the number. A quick reminder... We have a major rally planned for Justina Pelletier to free her this Saturday at the state capitol, the state house to be particular, on the steps, 2 to 4 p.m. I will be, I will be there. The Cooner Report is spearheading this. I need all of you to show up. Lou Pelletier, the father, will be there. Members of the family will be there. Some state representatives will be there. We need big numbers. We need to put as much pressure on the politicians in Beacon Hill, in, in Mini-Me, the governor, DCF, HHS, to show that we, the people of Massachusetts, want this girl to go home. And to all of you out there, this could be your daughter. This could be your child. Effectively kidnapped and being tortured by DCF. The 24th of May, the reason why we picked that date, is it will be Justina's 16th birthday. For nearly 16 months, she has been taken away from the custody of her parents. She is literally wasting away and dying. Her legs are bloated. In fact, she can no longer use her legs. She's losing weight. She's losing hair. She's growing gaunt and skinny. She's now under a 100 pounds. She has marks all over her body. If we don't do something soon, this poor girl is going to die. DCF will have another dead child on their hands. 
We can save her. We can rescue her. We can make a statement to the thugs that run DCF and run this criminal regime that is the Democratic Party. You will no longer kill our children. You will no longer kidnap and control our children. Now, I just before I get to the blazing lines, a couple of texters are saying, well, Jeff, 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 what's a rally going to do, Jeff? It's Memorial Day weekend, Jeff. Mini-me's on holiday. He's always on holiday, but let that go. The offices are closed. That's not the point. Trust me when I tell you this. They have been trying to do everything possible to prevent this rally from taking place. They went so far as to go to Thompson, Connecticut, where she's now being taken care of in a psychiatric facility, Justina. And they deliberately scheduled the birthday, her birthday party, to be, guess what? From two to five. To try to force the father and the parents to choose between going to a major rally to help free their daughter or to celebrate with their daughter in her, uh, in, in, in the facility, in the, in the room with a birthday cake. Cause they don't want the parents to show up. Because they want them to pay a price every time we do something to try to free this girl. Many these minions are gonna be there. Trust me, DCF's cronies and agents are going to be there. People on Beacon Hill are going to have their aides there, and they're going to be watching. Mark my words. How big is the crowd? How many people showed up? Because what they're banking on is the protest that they've seen up to now, where it's been scattered, where it's 30, 40, 50 people tops, small crowds. They go, ah, we can handle this. There's not enough outrage. We can still manipulate and deceive and dissemble the people of Massachusetts about what's really going on at DCF and with this poor girl. But if they see hundreds, if they see a thousand if they see a huge rally on the steps of the Capitol on a Saturday, they're going to turn around and say, oh my God, people really have had it. This is more than about saving the life of one young girl who was illegally and criminally taken away from the clutches of their parents because they disagreed with the diagnosis of Boston Children's Hospital. This is about you. About you as a parent. About your children. About your kids. Who has ultimate parental control and authority over your children? Who decides what's best for them and their health? You or the government? You or DCF, you or that commissar thug, John Polanowitz, who runs HHS, you or mini me. If we let them get away with this, the next time you go to Boston Children's or Mass General or whatever hospital and you disagree with their diagnosis, They've established a precedent that they can take your child away from you. Now, I'm going to be very candid. And I'm going to be a little bit um, brazen about this. And maybe borderline offensive. And I'm not doing this to insult you, the audience. But I'm being candid with you. That's what this show to me has always been about. If I'm not here to tell the truth, then there's no point in me being behind the microphone. If you don't show up on Saturday, please don't ever complain to me again about the state of affairs in this state. I'm not a Twitter activist. I'm not Michelle Obama. I'm not a guy who just goes, hashtag whatever, free Justina, and then I'm done. And I pat myself on the back for my compassion. We can save this girl. And not only save this girl, 
and rescue her and save her life. But even more importantly, we can send a powerful, damning message to the corrupt politicians who have run this state into the ground that we, the people of Massachusetts, have had enough. And I'll tell you, you may go after our wallets, and you may go after our money, but when it comes to our children, the answer is simple. Yet, hands off our kids. Don't ever complain to me again about how you're upset or disgusted with the antics on Beacon Hill or with the government in the state. I need you to show up. Your presence there, your voice there, your appearance there will send a message, trust me, that will shake the foundations of this out-of-control liberal regime to its very core. 617-266-6868 617-266-6868 is the number. This Saturday, May 24th, 2 to 4 p.m. Please, I'm urging you, I'm begging you, let's get this girl home. Bring a friend, bring a family member, if you can, bring your kids. Call, please show up in big numbers. We need to send a message and a powerful one at that. Jamie, you're up next. Thanks for holding. You're on RKO. Welcome. Good morning, Jeff. Uh, thank you for everything that you do. Uh, and, and more, you know, more personally, thank you for uh, personally calling me with an issue that I called in about uh, a few weeks ago that that me and my fiance are having with DCF. You could have had Brittany or Cooksey call me, but you know, you called me yourself, and I really appreciate that. Um, oh yeah, Jamie. Listen, I'm. I'm I, I, now, what happened was, Jamie, I didn't speak to you. I got your voicemail. Yeah, but but you did call me yourself, and, you know, obviously it, with my schedule, it's hard to answer the phone, and I would have loved to speak with you personally, but, um, you know, your your voicemail Jamie, gave I gotta me tell some you, information. Buddy, I, I, would, I would do it a thousand times. I hear so many now cases of people like you that it, have been so destroyed and run roughshod by DCF. They're it's out so of control, worse. Jamie, and it's time it's time we taught them a lesson. Well, you know, unfortunately, there's not a lot of uh, a lot of resources out there for soldiers in the family court uh, aspect, but there are good people, good lawyers out there that are willing to do what they can for for limited resources. I was, you know, able to find one, and and you know, that was with your help. Thank you so much. Um, I do want to add in, uh, my fiance will be there on Saturday for the. The, the rally for Justina. I have a military obligation. Unfortunately, I can't be there, but I will be there Sunday um, for the Cape Cod Cares for the Troops. I have personally gotten a package from them uh, in Iraq, and I appreciate what they do. Whatever I can do while I'm there to lug boxes, whatever to help, um, I will do that. Um, and, uh, you know, I wanted to add in about Charlie Baker. Honestly, you know, I, you, I'm sure you have your own opinions about him, but he, he seemed really weak to me, and I'm kind of I'm kind of set back because I was really hoping for a stronger candidate. Jamie, first of all, thank you for your service. And definitely, we need your help on Sunday. Brittany's going to have a car full of boxes. Well, I'll be there to help lug them. Jamie, thank you for that call, and thank you for your service. Thank you. God bless you, sir. Look forward to meeting you on Sunday. John, you're up next. Thanks for holding. Go. Hey, I wanted to say a couple things about the Charlie Baker race and then one thing about the Mass GOP in general. Go ahead. Shoot. Um, but the, the Charlie Baker race, so I understand that he is uh, not quite as far to the right as a lot of people would like him to be. Um, but there's there's something that always that I always try to remember is that no one else really stepped up in this race. And we don't, um, you know, as much as people want a fighter, we need some fighters to run in order to have that choice. And I know Mark Fisher is in the race at this point. After all his drama, the only thing that would make me vote for Mark Fisher would be if some of the fighters in the party like Sean O'Connell and Jim Lyons and Jeff Deal and Mark Lombardo came out and said that they would rather work with him as governor than with Charlie. But short of that, I would vote for Charlie. And when you know the other thing, when people talk about fire in the belly and everything, um, you know, what fire in the belly does Martha Coakley have? She's got a bunch of drones. The only people with a fire in the belly for the Democrats are the uh, NPR hosts and the Marjorie Egan's and so, so it, that that really frustrates me that double standard that we put on ourselves. And um, the mass GOP in general, the one thing I wanted to say is, um, you know, I, I am most concerned about the Senate race and about how I don't see a candidate for that. 
basically at all. I don't think Adovinola is actually going to run. I'm not sure if he is or not, but you know, we um, I'm I'm really happy that Mark or that uh, Gabriel Gomez isn't the incumbent right now. And I was kind of happy when uh, Marky got in there because I thought it teed us up perfectly for a six-year term race, but nothing. So I'm really disappointed in that lost opportunity. Uh, John, thank you for that call. Look, I think you summarized the feelings of many Republican activists. We, the Republicans, are the shook. I said this before, I'll say it again. And this is my mission. I'm telling you, this is my mission with this show. Conservatives in this state have become the Chicago Cubs of politics. We've lost before we've even gotten onto the field. We're so demoralized, we're so disillusioned, we're so depressed, we've given up. Or at least we did before. Now I'm telling you this, because of this show, you know where I think the future is? I'm telling you. It's listeners on this show. I, a lot of listeners, a lot of callers say, why is this person running? And because of this audience, we're now actually getting new candidates. Many new candidates were actually, are actually listeners to this show. And so the future, I believe, is not Gabe Gomez, who's now trashing the Republican Party left, right, and center. It's Sean O'Connell. It's Mark Lombardo. It's Jim Lyons. It's Jeff Deal. Leah Cole, 25 years of age. She was a nurse. She said, this state's a mess. I'm going to clean it up. She ran and she won. But you got to fight. You see, this is the problem. The liberals and the Democrats in this state, with the unholy collusion with that Judas, Brad Jones, that House Minority Leader, they want you to think you can't win. It's hopeless. So don't even bother fighting. This Saturday, May 24th, let's show them that the rebellion is beginning. And it's starting with us telling DCF, Lay off our children. Free Justina Pelletier. Hope I can see all of you uh, Saturday, May 24th, 2 to 4, the steps of the State House. Don't touch that dial. I got to go. Quick break. Welcome back to the Cooner Report, 857 here on the Great WRKO. You want to see what incredible audience we have. Here, Craig from Sweet Spot Bakery. And trust me, you haven't lived until you've had a cupcake or a piece of pie or a cake from Sweet Spot Bakery. Well, Craig says anybody who shows up, anybody, every person who shows up at the rally for Justina Pelletier this Saturday, May 24th, 2 to 4 p.m. at the steps of the State House is going to get a voucher from Craig to go to Sweet Spot Bakery. You get a free cupcake. you uh, I hope, Craig, you bring a lot of vouchers, my friend, because uh, hopefully we're going to have a lot of people show up, but you get a free cupcake. Huh? That's not bad. Isn't that nice from Craig from Sweet Spot Bakery? Thank you very much, Craig. Um, here's a text I want to share with everybody. This is from 857. Hey, Jeff, not everyone that cares can come. I myself am disabled and can't go into Boston, but I do make calls and contribute. 857, God bless you. And thank you. Obviously, if you're disabled, of course, you can't make it. That's not what I'm... My message is not meant for people who are disabled or for those who are going to have an operation on Saturday or have a very serious family function. Of course, I understand. But let's be honest. Most people are going to be free on Saturday. It's Memorial Day weekend. And the very same people... I said this about the tax rally who complain about how bad things are in this state when given a chance to drive down to Boston, voice their disapproval, show up, hold a rally, just be there for two hours. They don't do anything. And then they're the same ones calling on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday about how bad the the Commonwealth of Massachusetts is. My friends, things will not change until you let your voice be heard. We can break DCF, we can break this liberal regime, we can protect our children, and we can send Justina to where she belongs, with her parents at home. But I need you on Saturday to show up. Rick, you're up next. Thanks for holding. You're on RKO. How are you, sir? Good. How are you, Rick? I'm a Navy veteran, and this is an SOS to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. The citizens must. 
at all costs protect our children. It's despicable. I'm trying to conduct myself as a gentleman, and I will not swear. I have an honorable discharge from the United States military. Who in their right mind has the decision that, and I go right, I, I agree with the Commonwealth, the citizens, go to the State House, listen to the bulldozer. I had a, a, a quirky idea. Get a bulldozer from a contractor that might be listening and put it right up in the State House. <laughs> By the way, it's it's perfectly legal. We have a perfect right to protest so or hold a rally. So don't be afraid. No one's going to get arrested. Trust me, the Cooner man got all my ducks in a row, dotted every I, crossed every T. It's all above board. Now, if I get the bulldozer, they'll arrest me. But uh, it would be funny, wouldn't it? My friends, coming up next, don't touch that dial. Somerville is now the first community in Massachusetts and maybe the rest of the country, to now be signing an executive order explicitly barring the police, preventing the po- the cops from holding illegal aliens in jail simply for immigration violations. It's now a wide-open sanctuary city to all the illegals and terrorists out there. Come on down. News at the top and bottom. Talk in between. Every time I try to get out, they pull me back in. This is AM680 WRKO, Boston. Welcome back to the Corner Report, Hour 4. Jeff Corner, Boston Bulldozer. 906 here on the great WRKO, AM 680, and now on 93.7 HD2. Uh, I'm getting a lot of texts from people about the rally for Justina Pelletier that the Cooner Report is sponsoring. Um, <clears throat> can they bring signs this Saturday, 2 p.m., at the steps of the State House? Yes. Please, the more signs, the better. Justice for Justina, free Justina, whatever... As long as there's no profanity or, or obscenities, please feel free. The more signs, the better. Craig from Sweet Spot Bakery, who's going to be offering a voucher for a cupcake at his incredible bakery, is going to say he's offering a, a voucher to anyone who shows up at the rally, has now called into the Cooner Show, to the Cooner Report. He's just called in. Craig, how are you, my friend? Hey, Jeff. Uh, How are you? So, Craig, are you sure about this? You you sure you want to stay behind this and 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 a voucher for everybody that shows up? Why you don't think I can can do it? I, I, Craig, what if I mean? What if a lot of people show up? I mean, I don't want I don't want you to bankrupt yourself over this. That's fine. That's okay. I, I wish I could show up sadly, but unfortunately, I work seven days a week. <laughs> so you got to keep your bakery open. Yeah. So I mean, but I mean, can you make that many cupcakes? Of course I can. Really. Yeah. All right. Now, Craig, now, when they get a voucher, are they just going to get, like, the vanilla cupcake or the plain cupcake, or can they pick whatever cupcake they want? They can pick whatever they want. It's only one cupcake, so, uh, yeah, they can pick whatever they want. So any cupcake of their choice? Sure. Craig, that's very generous of you, my friend. So you guys going to handle the passing out of them, or? Uh. Yeah, Craig. Now, what what would count as a voucher for you? Uh, just something simple, just a uh, one one free cupcake for showing up for the event. Okay, and we'll hand it out. We'll have we'll get something. Now, hold on. Now, Craig. Yep. Hold on. I mean, do you want Brittany to help make the cupcakes? <laughs> Brittany and Cooksey. We'll Brittany and Oh, listen, Brittany, by the way, I swear to you, Brittany actually is a you know, people don't know this about her. Brittany's a pretty good baker. Brittany, I mean, she's not on your level, Craig. Don't get, I mean, you're a chef. You're a master. You, I mean, hey, don't get me wrong here. Me up, you never took me up on my class. I told you I would teach you, Cooksey, and Brittany something someday. Oh, well, see, I wanted to. Brittany wanted to. But Cheapski, uh, Cooksey, didn't want to because he's afraid. Tell him fine. He can bring both. We'll leave her outside. <laughs> <laughs> No, she's actually, I tell you, she's pretty good. I mean, honestly, she's not in your level. I don't want to insult you. You know what I mean? You're a man of your talent and your professionalism. But she makes a mean cupcake. She can make really good muffins. Her brownies are phenomenal. Craig, 
Her carrot cake is to die. I mean, it's not an, again, it's not nothing comparison <laughs> to you, but her carrot cake is to die for. Craig, you may have a potential protege here. That's fine. That's good. <laughs> so Brittany will help you, and let's say there's 500 vouchers. Ah, just give out what you want. It's not a problem. I can handle it. You can handle it? I can handle it. All right, and Craig, I assume Brittany's going to make the vouchers, correct? Uh, I'll talk to her about it. Okay, you got it, buddy. Okay. Uh, Craig, I just I want let me throw you some free business, my friend. Tell okay. everybody where they can go to. Honestly, seriously, I've had food drops from this guy. You haven't lived until you've eaten the treats and desserts that Craig at Sweet Spot Bakery offers. I'm telling you, uh, carrot oh. cakes, chocolate cakes, chocolate cupcakes. Uh, there's even the cooner. Do you still have the cooner cake? Of course. Oh, that's the piece de resistance. I mean, that uh, baptisms, communions, birthdays, weddings. You don't get a better cake than the Cooner cake. Craig, give everybody your address, a website. Where can people reach out to you for literally the best desserts in the city? Okay, it's Sweet Spot Bakery. It's 163 West Emerson Street in Melrose. And yeah, phone number is 781-665-3290. And the website is Sweet Spot melrose.com sweet spot melrose.com yeah craig i can't thank you enough for your generosity oh well, you're welcome god bless you and i know the pelletier family are very grateful thank Just, you so much craig you're really a good man that's the best i can help <laughs> thank you so god bless you thank you so much Thanks, Jeff. god bless you my friend 617-266-6868 again this saturday may 24th 2 to 4 p.m uh, the Cooner Man is going to be spearheading a major rally to free Justina Pelletier at the steps of the State House. Perfectly legal. We have every right to be there. We've already checked. Our lawyers have looked into this. I need as many of you to show up as possible. We're going to set up a Facebook page right after the show so we can coordinate transportation. Some people are already texting saying, Jeff, we're going to bring vans, we're going to help drive people. So through Facebook, we're going to try to get as many people po as possible to attend the event. If you can make it, I would be immensely grateful. Justina would, and so would her family. Okay, my friends, whatever you do, whatever you do, don't go through Somerville anymore. Or as I like to call it now, Slummerville. Because it is becoming Slumville, USA. This is unbelievable. Again, we're making national news. And again, it's for all the wrong reasons. I, no, really, I swear, the people of the country must think we're a bunch of lunatics. The Commonwealth of Taxachusetts, I'm telling you, is becoming known in this country as a, national, as a major uh, a lunatic asylum. I, I, people in the 49 other states are saying, that's not a state, that's, a, that's an insane asylum. So, here is now the latest developments. The mayor, Joseph A. Curtatone, otherwise known as Crooked Curtatone, Crooked Curtatone, who apparently loves crooks, is slated to sign an executive order tomorrow. Now, check this out. Barring his cops from holding undocumented illegal aliens in jail simply for immigration violations. This is absolutely unprecedented. Unprecedented, but it looks like other communities may follow. In other words, starting tomorrow in Slummerville, it's going to be illegal to be illegal. You will not be deported. They will not report any illegal immigrant to ICE. Basically, if you've come here illegally and you get yourself into Somerville, unless you're some kind of a mass murderer or rapist, you're in the clear. It is no longer illegal to be illegal in Somerville. And according to Crooked Curtatone, he's standing there bragging, hat tip to the Herald, they broke the story, he tells the Boston Herald, that, quote, we need to stop villainizing these people and start solving the problem. 
And he goes on to say, quote, Massachusetts holds itself out as a progressive state. We should lead the way. We should uh, hold ourselves out as a progressive community that believes in fairness and doing the right thing. This is morally the right thing to do. To crooked Curtatone. It's the immoral thing to do. Because what you are doing, and deep down you know it, is you are now turning Somerville into a massive mega magnet for illegal aliens, for gangs, gangbangers, drug dealers, criminals. You are going to see Somerville turn into a massive slumville. It is going to turn into a massive barrio, a huge ghetto, whereby everybody who has broken the laws of this country are now going to go to Somerville and effectively be given immunity. You even have law enforcement. They are completely besides themselves, saying, this is going to kill us. This is absolutely going to kill us. Because now, essentially, their uh, law enforcement is no longer going to be able to cooperate with federal immigration officials. So, you have 10, 20, 30 million illegal immigrants. How many of them are violent criminals? How many of them are drug dealers? How many of them work for the Mexican drug cartels? How many of them are terrorists who come in here illegally or overstay their visas? So... If another Tsarnaev, if another flashbang or speed bump, if they just go to Somerville, you can't even check with ICE whether they're on some wanted terror list. Because the cops are barred from even uh, arresting you because you're an illegal alien. What he, what he has now done is he has put a target on the citizens of Somerville on the citizens of Massachusetts. And all I'm going to tell Curtatone, crooked Curtatone, is this, that crook. I hope you get what you deserve. Because I'll tell you what's going to happen. Mark my words, you can hold me to this. 917. You are going to see violent gangs proliferate in Somerville. You are going to see drugs go through the roof. You're going to see drug, uh, uh, drug dealers, uh, gangbangers, Mexican drug cartels, you're going to see terrorists, they're all now going to go into Somerville. Because essentially, once you get into Somerville, you're in the clear. You have essentially anonymity. And when the next terrorist attack happens, and we find out they had an apartment, probably public housing, probably on EBT cars with a mass health card, in Somerville, don't blame anybody but this crooked mayor, Curtatone. Ask Matthew Denise's parents. That illegal criminal alien, Guaman, that drunken Ecuadorian, got into a car with his own children, with his own child, drunk out of his mind and ran over that young 23-year-old man on his motorcycle like he was a dog, and then dragged him through the streets as that poor man was lying underneath the car, trapped, yelling and screaming, asking for help. You're going to get hundreds of guamans. You're going to see people dropping like flies, and you've just tied the hands of the police and the cops. I'll tell you what I'm doing. I'm boycotting Slummerville. You can say whatever you want about Jeff Cooner. You may agree, you may disagree, whatever you think about my politics, but I'll tell you this, my mother didn't raise a fool. You put a, a big welcome sign for criminals, you're going to get criminals. And I'll tell you this, I'm not risking my safety or that of my wife or that of my children. As far as I'm concerned, Slummerville is now off limits. 617-266-6868. Do you agree? Do you disagree? 
Mayor Joseph A. Crooked Curtatong has now turned Somerville into a sanctuary city. Other communities are to follow. Has this state officially gone insane? Mark, I believe you're a police officer from Somerville, correct? Oh, he's not I'm in Somerville. A, okay, I'm sorry, yeah. Mark, you're a police officer. Welcome to the Kuna Report. Hey, Jeff, real quick, I'm going to send $50 into the uh, Cape for our uh, troops. Oh, uh, thank you, Mark. No problem. Uh, I've been involved in a, uh, probably over 100 deportations, and there are actually a couple of problems that, that are going to come of this. Number one, if this goes through, the if, if an illegal alien is arrested and they get processed in, in the police department, they get printed. So you you can find out uh, through the through the fingerprint system what the uh, prior arrests were, and if there are um, if they're wanted by ICE, and that's a pretty easy thing to do. If they if they are not allowed to do that, then you know these people that ICE usually typically will go after OUIs, domestics. Uh, violent crime, drug crime, uh, sexual crime, all that stuff, and those are those are markers for certain units within ICE uh, to pick these people up. Now, if they shut that down, that means everyone that's arrested for that is going to going to be allowed to stay. The other thing is, all the people that will go there, it's going to be a juggernaut. Probably, all these people will go there because they know that they're going to be protected. So. So they can be creating, create, uh, creating crime ad nauseum and they won't get arrested so you'll never know who these people are. It's, it's, the, the city I'm in, I'm on the North Shore, we've got a pretty big problem with it. Uh, you've got all the, you've got all the issues with the motor vehicle crime and then some of the other stuff that goes on. Um, and a lot of it's crime, they're committing crimes against themselves, their, their own, uh, their own friends and, or not their own friends, but people from the same community that they, that they came from. And it's it, it's a free for all. This this is this will open the floodgates for other people to, to come into mass. You've you've got a obviously around here you've got a big problem with illegal Brazilians, Guatemalans, uh, Dominicans that that come in. I would say ninety plus percent of the people I arrest have mass health cards. A lot of them have Section Eight, so we're already pouring uh millions upon millions of dollars into this and it's only going to get worse so when you look oh, at your paycheck, hold, hold on mark i just i i, I don't want to cut you off because you're making such an important point you're saying of the night about 90 percent of the illegal aliens that you arrest have either they're on public housing or have mass health cards or ebt cards correct yes uh ebt cards is what we what i look for now and they, when when they're going through their wallet for an id when they get stopped for a motor vehicle infraction that little blue card is in everyone's wallet. And I've even stopped people in, uh, for motor vehicle stuff. They all have the applications. Here's the way it works. Someone, the word is out that Massachusetts will give you the most money. Well, the Massachusetts will take the most money from honest, hardworking people, steal it from you to give it to everyone that shouldn't be here or doesn't deserve it. So they come out so that it goes from friend to friend. Yeah, come to Mass, come to Mass, come to Mass. And then it goes out as there are advocacy groups which target the the illegal groups. They might be Brazilians helping other Brazilians or whatever the group is, and they put the word out. There's advocacy groups telling these people what to go for, what to get, where to get it, how to get it. So the the Amer the, the the hardworking American taxpayer who's playing by the rules, who goes to work every day, trying to take care of his family, looking at his paycheck and having it, watching it dissipate week by week. It's, this is where a lot of it's going. Of course, it's going other places, but a big chunk of it, I think Matt admitted to a couple of years ago, $98 million for health care to illegal aliens. That's the number they admitted to. What's the real number? Oh, the real number is above $200 million. But, Mark, so what you're telling me is this. As a police officer, when you open up your paycheck, a lot of your taxes are going to pay for health care benefits, welfare, public housing, for illegal Guatemalans and Brazilians and God knows who other, Dominicans. Yeah, it, it, that, that's, the, that's what's around here. Obviously, on the border state, it might be... Um, it might be uh, Mexicans or Mexicans. Hondurans or... But I see everything. I've, I've seen people from India, people from Ireland, people from Italy, people from England. It's, the, the word is out that masks will fund just about everything. Just come on down. Yeah, and, and if you go, go, tell any of you callers, go into a, go into an emergency, emergency room in and around Boston, any major hospital, it's a pri it looks like a primary care physician's office because they're walking in the front door, they know they're not going to be denied, 
So they go in, they get whatever, they go over the no, with a cold, they're occupying that space in the emergency room. It's flooded with people that may need different, that may need more serious help, but you have to wait because they're going in the front door, they're, we're picking up the tab, and they're walking out the back door and never paying. And that's just on the medical side. That's not, every, uh, there was, there were probably half these cars that they stopped all in baby seats. Ay, ay, ay. Ay, ay, ay. Mark, great call. Thank you. Call back again, Mark. 617-266-6868. Well, it's like uh, Nicholas Guman, the guy that ran over uh, Matthew Denise. When the cops arrested him, what do you think he had? A mass health card and an EBT card. Hey, to all the illegals, MS-13, all the gangbangers, come on down. This is AM680 WRKO. Welcome back to WRKO 929 here on the um, the Cooner Report. Jeff Cooner, Boston's bulldozer. Steve, you're up next. Thanks for holding and welcome. Jeff. Hey, Steve. Hey, hey. I hope you won't hold it against me, but uh, I'm in Somerville right now, so. Uh... Oh no, I don't. I I feel sorry. For, I feel bad for you. <laughs> Not that I'm holding it against you. <laughs> Hey, I escaped to southern New Hampshire, so, uh, <laughs> you know, I just happened to be cutting through. But, uh, hey, Jeff, I'm hoping to make a couple of quick points. Go ahead, shoot. So tie it in a little bit with a uh, request or a plea from you, if you will. Okay. Uh, first of all, Justina Pelletier. Um, I can't go this weekend. I prior engagement that I absolutely cannot miss. But if I were to go, and what I would encourage all your listeners to do is I would be recording, bring your phones, and then be posting to Facebook and YouTube and, you know, all the different social medias, and they should be, you know, posting to Facebook right now, telling their friends about the rally, everything else, yes. and bringing awareness to yes. it. Yes, 110% uh, correct. Yes, and, you know, as far as uh, 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 Mr. Parker, I believe, got on, uh, you know, I thought that he had, you know, given a straight kind of politician answer when you, when you asked him about Justina Pelletier that, that, you know, I didn't like, you know, I don't know enough details about the case, you know, and it's, you know, I mean, should know enough details to know that she should be with her family right now, you know, so I really thought that was a straight political answer, and, you know, Jeff, this is his, Yes, his I agree, plea. by the way, again, I, Steve, so far you're batting a thousand, I agree with you again, 110%. Okay, well, let's see if we can make it three for three, Jeff. Okay. Jeff, my plea, and, and, and this is what, you know, I've been listening to you regularly now. I don't know how long. I think you've only been on the air here in Boston a little, you know, what, a year or so? Uh, 18 months. Uh, going on two years, in fact, in November. So I've been listening the last three, four months, you know, pretty regularly. And I agree with 80, 90% of what you have to say and how you say it and everything else. But I just wish, I really wish we could start connecting the dots here. Because to me, Jeff, it is not a liberal thing. Okay, Thomas Jefferson was a liberal, correct? He was a classic. Think, he was a classical liberal, correct? And which is would, different from I a modern day. Would all take, well, that's again. I don't think it's a Democrat Republican thing. I don't think it's a liberal thing. It's a progressive issue, and it's the progressives that are controlled by the big banks, the big corporations, the military-industrial complex. And they're on both sides of the aisle, taking up 80, 90% of Washington and all the posts around this country. Steve, you just did it. Three for three. You batted a thousand. Amen, brother. 617 266 6868. Somerville's mayor, Joseph Crooked Curtatone, is now turning Somerville into the ultimate sanctuary city. Literally, it's illegal to be an illegal in Somerville starting tomorrow. Do you agree, or like me, do you think it's absolute progressive insanity? All of your calls, next. Welcome back to the Corner Report 939 here on the great WRKO. We're at least here in Cooner country, it's still illegal to be illegal. But not in Somerville. And if uh, amnesty advocates have their way, there is now a law, or sorry, a bill, forgive me, that they want to make law, which is now being pushed strongly on up on Beacon Hill. 
It's in the State House. It's called the Trust Act, whereby essentially they want to have what's happening in Somerville now become the law of the land for the entire state of Massachusetts. And one of the advocates driving this thing is a Patricia Montez of this group called Centro Presente, where basically uh, she now wants the Trust Act. She wants essentially now to make it illegal. It's no longer illegal to be illegal, not only in Somerville. She says other communities are going to follow, and they want the entire Commonwealth of Massachusetts to basically become one massive haven for every illegal immigrant in the country. And she's waving a sign uh, on this picture in the Boston Herald, take hate out of our state. So now, if you believe in the Constitution and equality under the law, if you believe in upholding the rule of law, in protecting citizens and neighbors from gangbangers, from drug dealers, from uh, illegal alien killers like that man who ran over and killed Matthew Denise, suddenly now you're a hater. To want to defend your basic freedoms and liberties and life, your very existence, it's not, it's a hateful act. And Howie Carr has a brilliant column on this today, where according to Crooked uh, Curtatone, the mayor of, of Somerville, Slummerville as I call it, the mayor says, we have to stop, quote, villainizing these people, meaning illegals. Well, Howie says, why don't we just stop villainizing bank robbers? I would match Howie and go even further. Why stop villainizing drug dealers? Hey, come on. They're entrepreneurs. They're misunderstood. They want to be, they're trying to get money for their family. You see, unlike the Patricia Montezes of the world and the crooked Curtatones of the world and the Martha Coakley, remember her in 2010? Technically, it's not illegal to be illegal in Massachusetts. I actually adhere to the rule of law. I don't obey just the laws that benefit me. I obey all the laws. So, here's what I think, honestly, what should be now the reaction to this thing going on in Somerville. Not only should we boycott Somerville, because I know why the mayor's doing it. He's buying votes. This is now, this is, he's doing in Somerville... What the ruling class, what the dear leader and John Bonehead want to do with amnesty for every illegal immigrant in the country. There, Somerville is the test case for the rest of Massachusetts and the rest of America. Fine. You don't want to adhere to the rule of law? Tell me. What's the most discriminated against group in the entire country? Especially here in the People's Republic of Massachusetts. Us, taxpayers. So, you know what? You don't want to adhere to the law? Why should we start pay Why should we keep paying our taxes? Stop the hate. No, no, stop the hate. Why should it be illegal to be illegal to not pay your taxes? You see, this is the slippery slope. This is the road that you go down. When you start unleashing anarchy like that clown in Somerville is doing. 617-266-6868. Lines are loaded. Axel, you're up first on the Kuna Report, and welcome. Hi, Jeff. How you doing, buddy? I'm good. How are you, Axel? Good. About hate? To say it about hate. They make this... I couldn't believe just that, that girl just said that. Listen... You know, you know who I am. You know what I do. So I'm going to tell you something. I had to read something in roll call last night. You know, we have to call if we we, we arrest a, an illegal alien. We have to call their consulate now and tell them that they're under arrest. Uh, you, hold, Axel, just so the audience knows, you're a police officer. When you yeah. arrest an illegal alien, are you kidding me? You have to call the consulate of the nation they're from to advise them, to inform them that you've arrested them. Yeah, we read that. I read that a roll call last night. I goes, I goes, you're kidding me. Some some countries aren't thought there, you know, like Guatemala. That's not on there. But there's a few. There's a lot of all the countries. You got to call call the consulate, tell them that they're under arrest. Certain countries. 
Well, let me guess, Mexico? We don't, enough, we don't have enough to do. We got to call the consulate so they can help out. You know, it's it's uh, you know my my brother was just on a uh, couple of minutes ago for the next next city over for me. Uh, it's crazy, you know. It's 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 we had a, we had a guy last night. Uh, we couldn't we couldn't get his name out of him. He wouldn't tell us, and uh, we had a, we had a fingerprint to find out who he was. And he's from he was from uh, uh, Guatemala, and uh, he ended up at the, getting the free care at, at the hospital in my uh, my city. You know, it's uh, it's 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 crazy, Jeff. It's just you know, and this girl saying hate, no one hate about hate. It's about doing the right thing, like you did. It's about self preservation. Right Axel, I got to ask you this before I let you go. Yeah. Um, as a law enforcement person, as a law enforcement official, yes, sir. When you hear that the mayor of Somerville, that crooked Kurt Atone, that 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 sad excuse of a mayor, that he's now essentially turned all of Somerville into a massive sanctuary city. As a police officer, how does that make you feel? Well, you know, I you feel your hundred boss. He's tying your hands to do your job. He's your boss. He's the mayor of the, where you work. He's going to tie your hands so you can't do your job. You know, come on. You know, you know, you don't know what half the time you don't know what you're dealing with, anyways, because you don't know where they're from or who they are. And and now he's tying their hands even more. It's hard enough to do your job without him, him helping them. Helping the helping the bad guys. So that's who's going to go to that. Go to Somerville. Let's go to Somerville now. So open, open. Uh, you don't have to tell anybody who, who you are or do anything. This guy's tying his old people's hands. It's crazy. Axel, thanks for calling and stay safe, my friend. I'll see you. Hey, I'll see you, Sandy. I'll be up there with you, brother. Oh, uh, thank you so there. much, Axel. And I want to give my and uh, I want to give you some money towards. Uh, oh, the troops in Cape Cod. Oh yeah, I'm going to I'm, I'm going to give Brittany a. Uh, somebody personally and she'll take she'll, she'll take care of it. Oh wonderful. Hey thank you so much Axel. I'll see you brother. Take care. Take care. Six one seven two six six sixty eight sixty eight. Carol, you're up next on WRKO. Go ahead, Carol. Hi Jeff. Hey Carol. Yes, you when I went in the store today and saw the cover of the Herald I was quite distressed. I was the first call of the call, the Somerville mayor. I mean, not only the good points everyone's made, but also the taxpayer's property value will go down with all this. It also sets case precedents for other people that are breaking the law to go to court and challenge these things. I also see it as being something where it's not hate. It's about preserving America, preserving the taxpayers, preserving our laws. Carol. You know, I'd love to get this Patricia Patricia Montez on the show. Brittany, let's see if we can book her. I don't know if she speaks English or not, but the sign is in English, so I assume she can speak English. I'm going to ask her this one question. Look at that Marine that they've put in a hellhole of a prison in Mexico just for crossing their border with a couple of guns that he owns legally. And you think you think they're giving him uh, health care? You think they're giving him welfare? You think they're giving him public housing? I I said yeah. this before. For God's sakes, I'm begging you, deport the guy. They won't even deport him. He's rotting in a prison. So the Mexicans can put our people in prison, in basically in, in in a brutal prison where the guy's basically being tortured to death. But us here, what do you want? You want cash? You want food stamps? You want a home? You want what? Your health care? Uh, what? what do you, an, an, an Obama phone? What? Tell. What can we do for you? How can we make you live off the dole even more? The taxpayer is going to be killed over all this, and it's so unfair to the people that pay taxes. You're so dead on. You are so dead on. We are so getting hosed, and I got to tell you this about Slummerville. <laughs> It's going to go to pot. It's going to become Crackville, USA. Meth, gangs. I'll tell you this. No way in hell am I going to Somerville. No way. Hey, hey, to the mayor, I hope you enjoy. You reap what you sow. Because I'm telling you, in about ooh, two, three years, this thing is going to be one. This thing's going to become the Tijuana of the North. Comrade John, how you are, comrade? Oh, wonderful, Jeff. Can you tell? Look, how is it? that a mayor or anyone else in a position of power can just willy-nilly 
override a law through executive order. That in and of itself, I believe, is illegal, is it not? Yes. So where is a sheriff or someone with some balls, okay? We need some people in power with some nuggets. And arrest this guy. Arrest him. He's a criminal. This mayor is a criminal. He's a traitor, and he's a criminal. Bruce, you're up next. Thanks for holding. Go. And I've been patiently waiting. Your lines have been burned up all morning, Jeff. <laughs> hey, listen, Thank I want to make it a, a twofer, because I got three for three coming at you right here, and I'm going to segue into it very quickly. Go ahead. Number one, I'm going to vote for Chicken Charlie, but he's not saying what I want to hear. <laughs> Okay. Yes, yes, one. You nailed yeah. it. Home yeah. run. Go ahead, as shoot. As far as the just, uh, Justina Pelletier, I advise everybody, whether you're yellow, black, white, green, orange, illegal alien, legal alien, bring your kids with you and make a statement because he, you are also going to fall victim to the same thing that the Pelletiers are falling to. And just you, you think you're protected because you're a liberal or you're a Democrat, you're going to get the same crap. Okay, Bruce, you just hit the second one. Now, that, that one was over the monster, the green monster. All right, number three. It's not Slummerville. We're going to change it to Kill Hill instead of Winter Hill. <laughs> you know, let's put let, 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 let Whitey Bowser run around free as a bird. <laughs> well, he was discriminated against. Why are we villainizing? Hey, hey, these mobsters. Hey, come on now. They're misunderstood. AM 680 on your radio dial. And now 93.7 HD2. Welcome back to the Corner Report 957. Bill, you're up next on RKO. Go ahead, my friend. Good morning, Jeff. Hi, Bill. Hey, Jeff, I like Ch to hear Charlie Baker this morning. I wish he had taken a couple of more stands on things. Uh, but I'll tell you, I do like him better than Martha Coakley. And the biggest reason is because he was the architect of Romney Care. And I think uh, he'll be great. Uh, thank you for that call, Bill. Ralph, you're up next. Thanks for holding. Go. How you doing, Jeff? Look, at I, uh, we can stop this whole movement with this immigration stuff very easily, I think. I've heard a number of times that sanctuary cities are against the law. Technically, they're against the law. Now, if this mayor of Somerville is doing this, and therefore doing something to help illegal aliens who are already criminals, why couldn't this mayor be charged with being an accessory to a, a crime and dragged out of his office in handcuffs? And he should. If honestly, if we were a nation of laws, that's what the sheriff would do. He should be hauled off in handcuffs. Polly, you're up next. Go. Good morning, Jeff. Hey, Paul. Uh, we can't, every single community in the state is going to pay dearly for some of it. We can't even get our $100 million back in taxes paid for our local aid. So whether we go to some of it or not, we are all going to pay for this. I know. That's the sad thing. Uh, this is a text from 617. Jeff, I will not be doing any of my shopping or visiting any restaurants in Somerville. Everyone has to boycott the city. You nailed it, 617. To Curta Tone, here, you're going to hear from us now. Boycott Somerville. You're not getting my business. I got to go. Same time, same place. See you all tomorrow. Jeff Cooner, Boston's Bulldozer. News at the top and bottom. Talk in between. Half of the Democrat Party is going to take this seriously, and half of them are going to be outraged. This is AM680 WRKO, Boston.